Her hair is scarlet, and she's besties with Charlotte. It's Watch What Happens Live with Isla Fisher and Nicole Ari Parker now. <laughs> Joined by two stars with enough talent to light up any room, and we are about to get lit, by the way. On it, just like that, her new character bonded with Charlotte about paintings, and her performance is a work of art. Check out episodes now streaming on HBO Max. It's Nicole Ari Parker! Yay! And my next guest is so funny and fabulous that she never has to go fishing for compliments. It's Isla Fisher! Hey, you can watch Isla on Wolf Like Me, streaming now on Peacock. Drinking game alert. My guests won't know it, but anytime you hear anyone say this word, if you're 21 or over, drink until it goes from Thursday to Slursday. Uh, it's great to see both of you. Do you two know each other at all from around? No, but I wish we uh, did. Well, now you yeah. do. This is perfect. It's the perfect setup. And, you know, the two of you have such a long list of credits. So we are throwing it back this Thursday with some vintage clips. It's time to open the lights. All right, let's see what's inside. We're going to start with you, Nicole. Here you are getting busted by your mom. Uh, this is your first credited role, The Incredibly True Adventure of Two Girls in Love. It's a great movie. I love this movie. By the way, but my favorite appearance, here it is, 1997, Boogie Nights. So good, and the hair is so good. I love this movie so much. What? Yes. Isla, here's your first credited role as back in Clowning Around 2, 1990. Oh, my God, you are, you're a baby. She's a baby. Okay, here you are. Um, Scooby-Doo realizes that Isla is an actual demon. Classic. Iconic. Yes! Give it up, please. My God. You know, and just like that, Nicole is starring in the show nobody can stop talking about, including us. And since LTW wouldn't do anything without a formal invitation, Nicole, we are requesting the honor of your participation in answering our most pressing questions. So were you a fan of the original Sex and the City? I was. Um, I really loved the friendship, you know. I loved the lunch scenes where all the girls would get together and just work it all out, try to save each other from from some disaster. What was it like for you when fans thought that you were going to be replacing Samantha? That was the early kind of buzz when they heard you yeah. were in the show. Oh my God. I had an experience, this level of psychotic fandom. Fandom, ever. right. <laughs> because then how did it feel for you getting hounded by so many paparazzi while you were shooting the show on the streets of New York? Because that's a oh whole other God. level too. They swooped down like with the cameras, with who is that, with what's going on, where's Samantha, like the whole nine. And the, you know, SJ and Cynthia and Kristen, they were all very generous with me and helped me through that process. But yeah, that's 23 years of fans okay, you, that I stepped into. Uh, uh, yeah, that you stepped into seamlessly, by the way. What do you think of, you know, Mario Cantone coined it or his character, but what do you think of, of the idea that you're the black Charlotte in the group? Well, I think that's his his humor. Um, you know, I'm, you know, they, they really added these characters to finally make the city look like the city. Yes. So I'm just a part of that. Um, your wardrobe is so killer. Um, in the series, did you have any influence over what you were going to be wearing? No, that was all Molly Rogers and Danny Santiago. Like, it's every. I want your audience to know that what they think is actually what happened in the dressing room. Wow, like, it's that the, good. The third, yes, the thirty pairs of shoes, the twenty-seven, just the same Fendi bag with a different handle, and you, and then deciding 
which one you're gonna use for the scene. Like that's what it was like. It was a it was a dream come true. That's heaven. Thank you very much. Um, we're loving the show. You know, last month Isla celebrated 20 years of marriage, and as impressive as that is, her, yes. Her relationship with acting, though, actually goes back even further. I want to learn more about her wild ride going steady with the industry. Tell me the best advice you've ever received from a fellow actor uh, in the business. Um, Actually, about a decade ago, it was my friend Naomi Watts. Sorry to name drop, but she did say... Um, because I, before I was kind of choosing material around the role or the location, she was like, it's all about the filmmaker. I love really take a smaller role with a fantastic filmmaker and you'll just, it's the best work experience ever. Okay, well then that's a great segue to this. Tell me the worst gig you took for the sake of a paycheck. Well, that wouldn't be an acting gig. That would be when I used to sell, I had a rescue pony when I was 11 and I used to sell the horse poop by the side of the road for two bucks a bag. Wow, wow, that's rough. Tell me when that you is were, rough. When also, you were, Andy, I didn't wear gloves. We didn't have gloves back then. Wow. wow. <laughs> when you were on the, when you were coming up, who was your biggest competition? Who you would always see um, auditioning for the same parts? Oh wow! I mean, there were a few of us. Actually, it was a really warm, like little circuit. And we'd all kind of bump into each other and each of us would get a sort of a turn at a different role and, and everyone's still working. So everyone was so supportive. We'd come out of auditions and go, hope you get it. It was very nice. Yeah. I never had any uh, sort of competitive vibes in audition waiting rooms, personally. That's great. Who made you the most starstruck the first time you met them in your... Oh, Eddie Murphy. I love Eddie Murphy. I watched Coming to America probably a hundred times. I watched his stand-up tour and learned to swear when I was about 10, much to my parents' disappointment. Um, and I just have loved Eddie Murphy my whole life. All right, thank you very much. Um, Nicole, um, I, and Boris, your husband, Boris Kojo, uh, just directed you in his directorial debut, right? Yes. That's amazing. Yes. And what was that like? being directed by him well it was nice to see him in his element he's so creative and you know he's such a hunky actor you know that he only gets put in this box but he's actually a brilliant human being and it was just very sexy to see him bossing everyone around i i have to say it was very i saw the two of you at the uh, just like that premiere in new york city before the holidays and it was so, I was just watching the two of you together. It is very clear how in love the two of you are. Uh, what, we're 16 years. So I know, we're right it's behind. amazing. I, know, yeah. I would think, I mean, I could ask either of you this, but I would think that being together in the business, in front of the camera, is, it's, I would assume that it's very challenging to keep a relationship going for that long. Well, any relationship. I think the opposite. Yeah. You think the yeah. opposite? Yeah. I think it's really nice to have someone to kind of gripe about the Hollywood nonsense. And, you know, I think it's nice to just relate to somebody about breaking down, I don't know, material or exchanging creative ideas. I think it's good. And, and, and you too, Nicole? Well, I think any marriage and marriage with kids is hard. <laughs> Right. But, you know, one of the things that, like I was saying, it was so nice to come home and have someone understand what you've been through. And, you know, when I was shooting and just like that, every time I came back home on my days off, it was like date night happened, staying up late happened, all kinds of yummy stuff happened. So, like, <laughs> my career, career can bring the spark and keep it alive you know because you know you've got this whole thing going on and you know separation makes the heart go fonder 
Wow. Um, Isla, Kayla R uh, was wanting to know, she's a big I Heart Huckabees fan. She wants to know your favorite memory of, of working on that set with such an all-star cast. Uh, I have so many fond memories. I think uh, the scene that Naomi Watts and I kind of improvised where David and Russell would sort of holler direction across the set during the take. Um, you know, and, and say, you know, it, improvise this line. And the lines were so out there. But, um, and I get to sort of, she pulls me over. It was really fun physically. We did physical comedy, but we all had great lines. And uh, I, I had a great movie. time. I love that movie. Yeah. Were um, you there on the big blow up day between uh, David O. Russell and Lily Tomlin? You were there that day? I, I, uh, <laughs> ooh. Um, <laughs> What do you remember about that? Um, I, uh, you know what? There was some strong emotions. There was some, uh, you know, I'm a redhead. Usually I'm, I'm right on in there, but that one I was like. <laughs> right. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, coming up, we have more with the cool Ari Barker and Isla Fisher. Here we she's coming on the show next week. Don't go anywhere. I'm sorry if I was being pushy about it. The benefit committee's just all over me to get more flashy auction items. Oh, and remember for this match, the redhead is deadly at the net. Right, and the other one has that killer serve. I could barely return it last time. Let's go, come on. But we can beat these bitches. Oh, we can, and we will. Joined by Isla Fisher. Drink it till just like that, you're lying flat. Was that the first time you've seen that that scene? Yes. Oh my God. You know that hat? That was a perfect example of like the only one left in the world. Right. Yes. Well, by the way, I was going to ask you: Is there one piece from uh, Lisa Todd Wexler's wardrobe that you wish that you had snuck home during filming? There were a couple pieces. Um, there were the purses I carried by this Italian designer, Veronica. Uh, I don't know how to say her last name, but Cicliani. Uh, and uh, and uh, the, my Mark Davis bracelets and my Rihanna and Nini, uh, Nina bracelets. Uh, I mean, it was just endless. The yeah, clothes, yes. And, um, yeah, oh, wow. By the way, Isla Violetta M wants to know how hard it was not to laugh during your scenes in Curb Your Enthusiasm. Oh, that was so hard. That was so hard. <laughs> and also, I had to intermittently cry. So it's like using a different sort of part of your, I don't know, instrument. Like you're about to cry, and so you have to think of a really sad thought. But then it's Larry David, and you just want yeah. to laugh. You're so good. You are so good on that show. Really, really good. Uh, I want to go to our virtual uh, audience. Ebony and John are in Philadelphia, and they have a question for Nicole Ari Parker. <laughs> Uh, first, Andy, I have to let you know how much I love you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Nicole. You are so beautiful. What you. memories do you have of meeting Aretha Franklin backstage at a streetcar named Desire? And did you know the Queen of Soul was going to be in the audience that night? No, I didn't know where she was coming. She, uh, We were told after the show that she wanted to come backstage and say hello and I was, I just listened and basked in her presence. And uh, later I got flowers from her and I held on to them as long as I could. Uh, yeah, thank you for asking that question. It's one of my most treasured memories. Oh, that's so nice. Here's Sydney from New York City with a question for Isla Fisher. Isla, I love you. Andy, love you too, of course. So I wanted to know, since there's been so much back and forth about a Wedding Crashers sequel, can you please give us an update if we'll ever get another movie? I wish I had an answer. I get asked that question so many times. I thought we were pretty close recently, and then I heard that I think Owen joined, um, he jumped forward in different projects. So I think... Hopefully we can keep the momentum up and yeah, it'd be a lot of fun to revisit that bipolar nymphomaniac again. Ah, always. Thanks, virtual fans.
Well, from being in Confessions of a Shopaholic to starring in the Sex and the City reboot, our guests have worn some fabulous fashions, but do they stand by what they wear on their own time? I want to take a look back. My guests are going to have to decide whether their prior looks are delightfully unforgettable or totally regrettable in fashion or trash, hon. Okay. Um, we're going to start with you, Nicole. Fashion or trash on date night with your hubby in 03. I love this night. So okay. She's keeping it. it. Okay. I'm keeping it. All right, Isla. Um, here we are in the early aughts. This is the premiere of Ali G in 02. Are you going to keep it or are you going to throw it in the trash? I got to throw it in the trash. I can't believe my dad is going out. I'm going to <laughs> okay, uh, here we go. Stripes and bangs at a 2004 screening of Soul Food. Uh, that's when my boobs didn't need a bra, so I'm keeping that. Yes. Okay. Isla, here you are looking demure with an ice pick in 1999. <laughs> I don't know where you are. You're looking very crappy and like an anchor woman, kind of. I mean, you're giving me, like, Savannah meets Hoda here. Wait, it's the combination of an open toes, but a sweater. I mean, I, I, there are no words. What is my haircut? It's not, it looks like my mom. Okay, it's throw rat, it out, rat. everybody. Throw it out. Okay, um, there's a lot going on here at a 2005 event <laughs> in Hollywood. I mean, wow. Okay, she's trashing it. She wants it off the screen. Okay. Isla's looking a little Carrie Bradshaw at the 2005 premiere of Wedding Crash. That's a good one. Who made that dress? Do you remember who made that dress? Oh, Chanel. 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 Yeah, that's. I, I assume you're keeping it. Okay, Nicole, um, there's even more going on here in 2005. <laughs> Trash it. Trash it. Oh, she wants it off. Okay. Uh, sparkles galore at the 2005 Emmys. Ooh, that's a good one, right? No? Yeah. It's nice. I wish my bra wasn't there, but I love it. Okay. Uh, Nicole, you're kind of giving us real housewife at the 2000 premiere of Welcome Home, Roscoe Jenkins. Uh, <laughs> a where I felt so pretty. I remember that day. And then everybody asked if I was pregnant. Oh! No. no. Wow. Kind of a and everybody just trashed me. Oh. But I felt well, If you felt pretty, then I think we should keep it. You look pretty. Yeah. All right. After the break, we have more with these two and watch what happens. so sweet. Um, Nicole, Katie L, can't believe you created the gym rap. She said, when did you have that first spark of an idea? And uh, did it make you super rich? You know what? I love that question. It really, I, you know, people think I endorse this product. No, I want to tell everyone out there, if you have an idea, go for it. I thought of it. 
I made it in my kitchen. I didn't have a business degree and I started a business. I asked questions. I had to learn from the bottom and make my way up to full on, full fledged business. And uh, I'm very proud of it. I'm not rich yet. <laughs> product. It's all relative, I guess. But, yeah, but it's uh, <laughs> it's been an incredible journey, and we're still going strong. Like every year, it's bigger and bigger. That's cool. All right, it is time for Watch What Happens Five, and just like that, we are counting down the top five side characters from the Sex and the City universe. Number five is Claire Ann, the Southern gal whose sexual exploits shocked even Samantha Jones. I guess Samantha draws the line at blowjobs under the dinner table. <laughs> this sad character's performance was so nice they hired him twice. Number four is me as a shoe salesman. Standing next to Carrie Bradshaw in a game of Curly then. Uh, number three goes to Jennifer Coolidge as Victoria. We love it. When Jay Cole plays a woman post breakup on the verge of a breakdown, she threw the most pitiful first party and fit in an epic tirade. Number two goes to a woman of few words, but she certainly had a lot of heart. We love Miranda's housekeeper, Magda, the great Lynn Cohen. Uh, you can also see Lynn Cohen in the Hunger Games movies. Our number one side character from the Sex and the City universe is Lexi Featherston, played by my friend Kristen Johnson. Safe to say we'll never forget when her character plummeted cigarette in hand out an open window. Spoiler alert, and just like that, I don't think she's showing up in the reboot. I want to thank Nicole Harry Parker and Isla Fisher for being here. Sunday night with other gay and Lucas Cage at 10 after Salt Lake City.